Hello and welcome to Factual Insider, the channel that strives to cover as many facts as possible. Today we will be discussing 10 facts about hyperdimension Neptunia Rebirth 1 that you may not know. If you find any of the facts to be interesting, please be sure to hit the like button, subscribe and hit the bell icon to receive notifications. Please be aware that this video may contain spoilers so you have been warned. With that being said, let's get started. Number 1. For potential fans of the Hyperdimension Neptunia series that don't know where to start in playing which games first, Hyperdimension Neptunia Rebirth 1 is usually recommended to potential fans with good reason. Hyperdimension Neptunia Rebirth 1 is a complete revamp of the original Hyperdimension Neptunia that released on the PlayStation 3 in 2010 in Japan and 2011 in North America. However, Rebirth 1 has the same style of dungeon exploration and gameplay that was introduced in Hyperdimension Neptunia Mark II and all the main Line entries of the series since. Rebirth 1 would also introduce a variety of new features that were not in the original Hyperdimension Neptunia title such as new DLC characters, new remake system that is similar to item synthesis and so on. Number 2. With a new take based off of the original Hyperdimension Neptunia title, Hyperdimension Neptunia Rebirth 1 would actually become one of the most successful entries in the franchise. Hyperdimension Neptunia Rebirth 1 so far is the best-selling entry in Japan, selling over 60,000 copies in its first week and in North America. It was the best-selling game on the PlayStation Vita's PlayStation Store for a few months putting popular games such as Minecraft PlayStation Vita Edition behind. Number 3. A big difference from the original Hyperdimension Neptunia title, Hyperdimension Neptunia Rebirth 1 would not have the characters Nisa and Gust return due to Nippon Ichi Software and Gust no longer working with Compile Heart and Idea Factory with the Hyperdimension Neptunia franchise despite both characters being a part of the story for the original Hyperdimension title. The game would include different characters into the story which include, Broccoli, Mages, Marvelous, Tech N, Falcom and CyberConnect 2. Sadly, the return of Sega sprites would not be in Hyperdimension Neptunia Rebirth 1 despite being an attack that players could use in the original Hyperdimension Neptunia most likely due to Sega starting their own franchise about personified game consoles a year prior with light novels that would eventually play into other media called Sega Hard Girls. Please be sure to check out our other video 10 interesting facts about Hyperdimension Neptunia you may not know for a little extra detail on the Sega-themed attacks. Number 4. Of course being a new take on a previous entry, Hyperdimension Neptunia Rebirth 1 would follow the same story as the original entry. However despite following the same story, there would be dialogue changes in the story along with completely different dungeons despite keeping the same story and events. This may not come as a surprise after the previous fact, but a few other noticeable changes in the story were the glasses that were used in cutscenes as disguises, the true ending, events that would include characters that weren't in the original Hyperdimension Neptunia, scenes that would introduce the CPU candidates despite being introduced in Hyperdimension Neptunia Mark II along with other changes as well. Number 5. Hence the spoiler warning at the beginning of this video, the true ending in Hyperdimension Neptunia Rebirth 1 would have a different true ending from the first entry of the series. In the true ending in Hyperdimension Neptunia Rebirth 1, players get to see a new and refined R4 that has changed from her evil ways and shows off a new look. In the true ending, R4 claims that she will try to right the wrongs of everything that she does done in the past. This reveal of R4's good self was not shown in the original Hyperdimension Neptunia that kicked off the franchise. Number 6. Introduced in Hyperdimension Neptunia Mark II, Falcom appeared in Rebirth 1, but would have the character design from Hyperdimension Neptunia Victory. Falcom makes a reference in the story of Rebirth 1 that she knows of Neptune and her friends from before. There have also been assumptions that being in the same dimension as the original Hyperdimension Neptunia, the setting of Rebirth 1 and the original Hyperdimension Neptunia take place after the events of Hyperdimension Neptunia Victory or Rebirth 3 despite being in completely different dimensions. Number 7. Being a new take on the original Hyperdimension Neptunia, critics did not like the original entry in the series but over in Japan, the original Hyperdimension Neptunia received better reviews. Despite the inconsistency of the opinion of critics, the new gameplay that Rebirth 1 has that was introduced into Hyperdimension Neptunia Mark II, Western critics gave Hyperdimension Neptunia Rebirth 1 average reviews but stated the game overall was an improvement from its counterpart on the PlayStation 3. Number 8. 
Having new DLC for Hyperdimension Neptunia Rebirth 1, sadly the original DLC characters Red and 5PB would not return. However, Pishi who was introduced in Hyperdimension Neptunia Victory would become one of the DLC characters for Rebirth 1. Unfortunately during the release of the DLC, players noticed that Pishi in her human form would use the same voice files as Nepgear. Thankfully an update would later fix the issue. Number 9. Along with the other multiple changes that were introduced into Rebirth 1 from its original predecessor, the game would use different opening and ending themes along with different tracks that were new to the game and were also used in previous entries of Hyperdimension Neptunia titles. Now would return once again for the opening theme of Rebirth 1 who has been the same singer for the opening themes of the Hyperdimension Neptunia games including its original entry. The ending theme would have only one of the singers from the original Hyperdimension Neptunia's ending theme which was Mirai Button from a field Ophelia Saga. Ophelia Saga did the ending theme Kao Wo Game Ni Shinate for the original Hyperdimension Neptunia and was credited as Ophelia Saga East. Number 10. The Hyperdimension Neptunia franchise before the release of Hyperdimension Neptunia Rebirth 1 was historically a PlayStation exclusive franchise that only had releases on PlayStation 3 and PlayStation Vita. Hyperdimension Neptunia Rebirth 1 would be the first game in the series to break the cycle of PlayStation exclusivity by having a Steam release on January 30, 2015 about five months after its North American PlayStation Vita release on August 27, 2014. This would help kickstart more Hyperdimension Neptunia titles to also be released onto Steam with releases that would also end up onto Nintendo consoles three years later with Super Neptunia RPG. Well there you have it. Those were 10 facts about Hyperdimension Neptunia Rebirth 1 you may not know. Hope that the video was enjoyable and entertaining. You are encouraged to watch more facts about gaming and other miscellaneous topics. See you next time.